we entered all of our projects that we have an interest in, we've entered those to go after silver initially. And Nichuan, Kurabaya, our flagship project, and Hurricane as well, have had this incredible kind of base metal story coming to light on each of them. And so silver still remains our focus at Kurabaya. We have a fantastic targets to go after, but we can't ignore obviously this 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 potential test and swing at a porphyry. We're on this you know, prolific copper porphyry belt in southern Peru. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. The Financial Survival Network. Welcome. This is Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. We're here to get an update from our sponsor, Tier One Silver, and we're with CEO Peter Dembicki and SVP Christian Rios. Well, we had some pretty major news come out of Tier 1 uh, through uh, CSMAT testing, uh, which is a complex way of searching for metals uh, from above the ground. Two porphyry copper targets have been identified, which is quite significant. These are the types of deposits that everyone is looking for, but few actually find. I will let you two gentlemen discuss its significance. It's great to have you back on. Peter, You've been searching for these porphyries for a while. They're always somewhat elusive, but you're getting closer. Yeah, thank you, Kerry. Uh, great to be back. Uh, seeing you again. Happy New Year. If it's not too late to say that. Um, you know, we we entered all of our projects that we have an interest in. We've entered those to go after silver initially. And Nichuan, Kurabaya, our flagship project, and Hurricane as well have had this incredible kind of base metal story coming to light on each of them. And so silver still remains our focus at Kurabaya. We have a fantastic targets to go after, but we can't ignore obviously this, this, this potential test and swing at a porphyry. We're on this, you know, prolific copper porphyry belt in Southern Peru that all within a hundred kilometers of us is Cerro Verde, Cea de Eco, Tocopala, Cajone, um, just to our Northwest. And, and there's a gap in the system where Kurabaya exists and people have been looking over this area for decades, looking for that next copper porphyry swing. And then these monsters start up again in northern Chile. So whatever occurred 57 million years ago, Paleocene era, which we, you know, age dated our rock. It's all the same as all of those giants to our, to our north and south uh, created these these big porphyry targets. And we just so happen to be in a fortunate situation where we have a preserved precious metals epithermal system and then residing below or nearby this this potential copper porphyry swing. So we get a chance at at a at a couple large world class discoveries here, all within our our flagship project Kerbia. Hey, Christian, great to have you back on, and happy and healthy New Year to you both. Of course, how significant are these findings? Well, this this is very interesting, very exciting because having do we did mapping, sampling, trenching, we defined these epithermal structures. We found a lithocap and scar mineralization horfels, and below that we're finding these. Two interesting anomalies, 500 meters five, by 500 meters each one. So having these anomalies below the area of mineralization and more important, the lethal cap and the scar and hornfels means a lot. Means that with all this mineralization at surface, there is a source. And having these two possible sources that need to be tested, or maybe, may, maybe the, there is only one big one. But having these anomalies below the mineralization air, air zone. It's very interesting to us. So these anomalies we need to test between 500, 800 meters. And we need to save also the, the some more drilling for the epithermal structures. But for me, it's very exciting because having this below the lethal cap and scar means we need to test. Like there is no, no, no other way, no other targets. We need to test those. Yeah. Right. And in prior the discoveries that you've made, is there an analog to these targets uh, for the porphyries that are in the area or nearby? I will say I, I was in, in, in Korani, Santana Discovery, and also I work with uh, David Law in Toromocho Discovery, which is a porphyry. In this case, in the case of Santana and Korani, we only had the epithermal structures, and in the case of Toromocho, we, we only had the porphyry area. So in the case of Curibaya, we have the complete system, epithermal structures plus the porphyry source, and being in the correct regional area, Paleocene age, that we dated our, our rock, our alteration, and being also in the correct uh, zone with all this mineralization below the lethal cap, that makes the area very interesting because our system is complete. I haven't been in an area uh, in the discoveries that I was part before. Uh, we had only one epithermal or porphyry. Now we, we are dealing with a complete system that needs to be tested. 
Right. So this looks even better than the other projects that you mentioned. Yes, because we're in a complete system and we need to test, to test all the, the targets that we have with the different evidences um, that is showing us in surface. Yeah, it's very exciting. Right. And, and Peter, for uh, for Q2 of uh, 2023, you got a pretty aggressive drill program going on. Yeah, I mean, the plan for us obviously uh, depended on on the capital markets and, and Treasury and allow us to do it all. Uh, uh, we're going to aim to do 5,000 meters. We, you know, the idea is to, you know, save 3,500 meters and really focus on that silver. We want short, shallow holes going into this Kimbaya zone on our property where we have that preserved precious metals that hasn't been eroded off. Presence of arsenic, you know, indicative of, of precious metal system lying below. Um, so those will be, hopefully we can get uh, a lot of drill holes out of that. And then obviously we want to save uh, a couple thousand meters to go test this porphyry. So uh, that's the plan. Um, and, and uh, you know, we didn't get to drill last year. So it was really painful to, to, to sit back and not progress the project as we wanted. But at the same time, uh, it did serve a purpose because we were able to spend money on exploration uh, and really hone in on these targets. So now our targets are way more identified than they were a year ago. Uh, really de-risks, you know, the, the the drill program as much as possible. So when we go there, we're going to be so laser focused and and hopefully come up with some great intercepts. Right. And financing, uh, obviously, you got to pay for this somehow. But luckily, yeah. the <laughs> stock price has rebounded a bit. And yeah, hopefully further. Yeah, I know. It's so uh, you know, we've since inception, we've seen silver go from from thirty dollars down to I think seventeen. We've seen. The capital markets uh, faucets turning off um, from a very crazy few years in, in the general broad markets uh, with this uh, interest rate and, and COVID, um, you know, rep repercussions. Uh, but we've seen our stock rebound over fifty percent from its lows. Uh, silver price holding up now, nice and strong in this third, you know, twenty three to twenty four dollar range. I do think we see another uh, another you know push up with silver prices and, and capital markets getting a little bit more aggressive in there. And the checks start to be written. So, um, you know, it's a great setup for us. Uh, but yes, in short, we will revisit at the top of the treasury to get this done. Uh, nothing aggressive. Obviously, want to get share price moving uh, in the right direction before we do that. So, uh, you know, we don't you know, avoid a little bit of dilution. And uh, not to mention, we've got uh, $4 plus copper. for Looking at uh, the tier one website, it says four twenty three a pound right now. Wow. Yeah, that's... That's exciting, right? And uh, coming off of a couple of conferences in Vancouver, you know, copper was a big topic. And as Ivan Bevic, my chairman, mentioned, you know, I don't think the world was ready for for you know the influx of of usage of copper and, and the demand that the uh, electrification of the world has has all of a sudden flicked onto electronics, most notably the uh, the EV sector. So uh, with the social unrest in the world, uh, with it getting harder and harder environmentally to, to get permitted to go explore for copper and, and to, to build out mines, um, supply is going to be uh, a massive, massive topic for the next, you know, 10, 20 years, because it does take, you know, 10, 15 years to bring something online. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a fantastic setup for metals investors. Let's hope the capital markets uh, also help with some tailwinds. Um, but it, it's certainly a great setup at the moment. Right. Any uh, plans for hurricane uh, the coming quarters? Yeah. So hurricane, it, you know, here's a project. Again, we went there initially with one community uh, access point where we went for silver, of course, because that's the nature of the beast. And uh, we were able to go in there with our our geologists, our technical team with Christian and and uh, really see that these, you know, three to four kilometers of, of structures, veins outcropping on surface, artisanal mining shafts going a few hundred meters into the ground. Uh, high grade bonanza grade silver uh, on surface with channel samples and rock samples really gives us you know that green light that we want to further explore that and then while those results were coming out we got all this data from the northern area of the property Nanahuayco, san cipriano that came with historical drill results and what was really interesting and uh you know my my geological background is is thin but learning on a daily basis from christian and the team uh, we could have the only really known copper nickel system in all of Peru. These are these are systems that are usually found in in Brazil or in Russia, and uh, they're you know thin sills that 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 uh, near surface that just horizontally can span for kilometers at a time. And so, when Christian talks to the majors, when we talk to um, uh, geologists and and major capital market players, it's a head scratcher. No one's no one's seen this before, 
And so it requires some more geophysics and more targeting to really get a sense of the scale and the size and, and to see if we got it there. So Hurricane's going to be a, a great district, 30,000 hectares, 13 different targets. We only have real access to three targets, uh, but they're important targets and the best ones. So uh, it'll, be, it'll be one that we explore throughout the year, try to bring those targets to drill ready, probably apply for drill permits really soon. And uh, it deserves to be explored further because it is such a mineral rich story with silver, you know, copper, nickel, platinum, palladium, cobalt and gold. So it's uh, it's it's anything you want up there. It's almost like you have too many uh, opportunities. <laughs> most most juniors struggle just to exploit one. And you've got like dozens here. That's yeah, you know, it's always it's always part of our group not to put our eggs in one basket. We had no idea hurricane would become uh, what it has. And so, you know, we don't want to stretch our bandwidth too too small, uh, too thin. So our focus is Kurabaya. Our focus is the silver at Kurabaya. And uh, uh, so many opportunities we, even within that property as well. Because as a reminder to our uh, loyal shareholders and followers and people familiar with the project, we're really only looking at a seventh or, or an eighth of the entire Kurabaya land package. Many other targets to, to focus there as well as we're seeing other copper targets uh, popping up. Uh, in and around where we where we explored previously. So um, again, we've only run one drill program, five thousand meters to date. Uh, a lot of surface exploration, so it deserves a couple more passes for sure to to really go after it. All right. Well, we'll look forward to it for twenty three, Christian. So you're going to be coming up with uh, targets in the next uh, several weeks. And as far as what you found now, targeting in on that, uh, what's your take on it? Yes, our plan in the, in the next weeks will be to determine the location of the, the platforms in the epithermal structures, which we think to, to, to consider 80% of the holes in the epithermal structures, and also to locate the platforms for the porphyry target. That will be the 20% of our uh, drilling meters that we are planning to do. So here is in the next coming weeks also, besides you know trying to locate that, we need more interpretation to work more, more with the data and then to locate these platforms and then to start the accesses to be ready to drilling, I would say, between April and May this year. Right. And once uh, once you identify the targets, then it's full steam ahead. Yes. Yeah, there is no return. We need to drill those targets. They are very clear. And yeah, very excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good campaign. Right. Hey, as far as uh, communities go, Peter, uh, I know for tier one it hasn't been as big a factor as for other companies out there, uh, but you're still moving ahead with the communities on on all of your projects. Of course, yeah, Kerry, communities are everything in Peru. So you know you can apply for the drill permits through the government all you want, but if you don't have your your social in order and your communities on board and treat them as partners, uh, you're not going to get very far in Peru. So we're very lucky, Christian and his team. Uh, and, and the social uh, aspect to this um, venture, uh, it's gone extremely well for us. So one community at Curabaya, where there are many projects within Peru and, and in South America that have multiple communities to deal with. A uh, few c uh, communities up at Hurricane. Uh, but as you've seen over the last year, getting access to these important targets, Peruvians do want exploration to occur. You just got to make sure you have uh, a very responsible and reliable group that like a team that we have in Peru uh, to make sure that uh, we treat them as partners and not just somebody that uh, you only contact when you want something. So uh, it's uh, it's a great thing that Christian has set up there, a great team, and which is why we've had so much success getting permits in expedited fashions and community access. Yeah, and that that says a lot for the team, doesn't it? Oh, it, it, yeah, volumes to operate in a country like Peru. I mean, listen, there's no country in the world that's easy to operate anymore. Everybody in every jurisdiction has their own uh, headwinds, so to speak, whether it's indigenous peoples, environmentally, uh, politi political aspect to it. You know, there, there's always something everywhere. Uh, but in Peru, we're comfortable operating there. We've been there for a while. Uh, we've seen some some political volatility uh, out there. I think since I've joined, this is my third president. Uh, I don't even know how many Christian has been living through, you know, in his time, but uh, nothing really gets done for for worse or for better. You know, I'm fortunate for the Peruvians, but for a junior exploration company, we fly under the radar for the most part. Uh, we're not employing 5000 people. We're not big producers that gain a lot of attention. Uh, so, you know, again, as long as the communities are on board, they want you there. Uh, you're going to have a lot of success with with um, with getting permits and, and access. 
Yeah, that's that's excellent because uh, community relations trump everything. Everything, yeah, yeah. So, and and you got to go where the metal is. You have no choice. And right. Christian, uh, so as far as getting everything ready, as far as plotting the next targets, you already mentioned you're honing in on them, and you're thinking April, May uh, when drilling. Yeah, open? yeah. That that's exactly that's exactly it. We'd like to start uh, this spring and drill throughout the spring, summer, uh, and possibly the fall. And uh, yeah, you know what? As a company as well, we're 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 always looking at at projects um you know globally we love south america obviously there's so many opportunities there um but you know kurabai is the focus this is this is something that we we just know it's there and we just have to to go and test and that's that's it and uh for us to be able to do that this year that'd be just fantastic and i can finally stop talking and we can finally start <laughs> filling and get going yeah hey, well we're really looking forward to that and this could be the biggest news from tier one silver in a long time in addition to potential kilo plus grades of silver, could be looking at a larger porphyry deposit or multiple deposits, clusters, which uh, I'm going to have to go look at my uh, mining encyclopedia and figure out exactly the significance of it. But I know it's important. And then who knows what else will be found? Nickel. I mean, uh, the hits just keep coming. So you should go over to tier1silver.com. Sign up for notifications so you can get the latest information as the drill program proceeds. Ticker symbol in the U.S., TSLVF, and in Canada, TSLV. Gentlemen, really appreciate you coming on. Peter, it's been a pleasure catching up with you. Be well. Thank you, Carrie. Great to see you. All right. And Christian, always great talking with you. You have a great 2023, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Carrie. Financial Survival Network.